All right, how's it going everybody? Uh, it's been probably three, four months since I've done a video, so um, hope everyone's been doing good. Um, I'm gonna share just a couple of uh, new items, I guess, that I haven't shown on the channel before. So um, today's software, we'll use the uh, SV um, Tundra Arctica. This is the beta 4.3. Um, I waited to get this until I finished my second puck of the first uh, 4.1 editions. Um, this one's phenomenal. Um, all the SV 4.3s uh, for me personally work really good. I really enjoy the scent of this as well as um, the skin feel. So one of my favorites. Um, real quick, I'll assemble my razor. So this is the carbon graphite. Um, this is a titanium DLC coated um, cap. I don't always use my complete um, like graphite base plates, graphite um, handle. So I kind of mix and match the pieces. Okay, so this is the um, Chinese Gillette London Bridge. Um, brand new one. I've really been enjoying these uh, this year quite a bit. Um, I seem to get a good amount of shaves with them. Okay, so I've got this may be right around a week's worth of growth, maybe even eight days. So today's base plate um, is the old school version, the solid um, plus plus um, plate. When I say solid, it means it's not the web version. So um, this seems to work well for uh, my skin. I tend to find that the web uh, plates, I've only got the original base plate and the plus. I think they give the overall blade feel just a little more presence. So, um, I tend to like the solid base plates a little bit more, but anyway, this is the carbon fiber and the stainless steel handle. So because I've got quite a bit more beard, um, I don't really need as much of a light touch. So again, I have that graphite version, which is the titanium being a little bit lighter, um, which I have been using a little bit more, but, um, for this amount of beard, we're, we're going to be okay. Okay. So the new brush, um, I think it was on one of my most recent um, videos, someone named Josh, uh, and maybe somebody else was asking about Plisson brushes. So right after that comment had been made, um, I think someone, Josh had asked, do I have any uh, Plisson High Mountain White? Um, so at the moment, I don't think that I do. Um, this is my new Plisson brush. It doesn't say Plisson. It says Herod's. So this was a uh, private label made by Plisson. It's obviously a Plexi um, acrylic. And um, it's starting to wear off, but this is pure uh, Blair, um, pure Badger. So from what I remember, there's a certain time frame where Plisson might have had what they considered um, high mountain white grade hair, but maybe they hadn't been distinguishing and making a, you know, like a sticker or an official grade. So, um, I know that my first plus on the $500 horn, I think it was like, what, what size was it? Um, I think it was a 28 millimeter. I forget the size, maybe like size 16 or something. Um, I know that that one had pure blur and then it said hot, um, something, however you say in French, high mountain white. So I have had high mountain white brushes, um, but as I've continued to buy more and more vintage Plisson. Personally, I don't really care what is printed on this. Um, one of my all time favorite Plissons was a pure, pure grade. It was like a gray, gray badger. So sometimes for me, the, um, the gray doesn't mean anything. It's kind of like when people were really getting into collecting Morris and Forndren and you have that whole blonde badger label versus finest badger and then sometimes they mean something different sometimes they're the same so for me the best tip i can give to anybody is if you're really wanting to pursue seeing what like a vintage plisson might feel like your best bet in my opinion is to buy something that is from a uh, like a third party not like a vendor um so that when you are buying it, you can see the exact brush. So this one was bought on eBay. Um, if you guys are on the forums, um, church, um, 
he, uh, that's his short name, uh, John, he uh, had posted a link to this, and this was $65 um, plus about the same shipping from Europe. So this is one of those deals where I just couldn't pass it up, and I'm really surprised that no one else um, tried to scoop it up. So I'm pretty lucky. But anyway, um, I wanted to load this up on camera so that if it helps anybody, you guys can kind of get a sense of what the... Um, what the tips of the hair might be like. So I'm assuming this is kind of like a, you know, 60s or a 70s vintage uh, Plasson. Um, this might be the only, or this might be only like the third shave that I've uh, had a chance to use this brush. Um, it's probably the biggest brush um, in, my, in my den that I will keep. Um, I wouldn't want to go much larger than this, but um, I've got another brush right now that you guys will see later, probably this year, that um, is smaller than this, but um, it's it's been interesting just during the pandemic. I've, I've gone through this. I hope I loaded up enough. Honestly, I probably didn't, but we'll just kind of see what's going on here not doing these videos for such a long time it's kind of weird getting back into one if you're I'm just not used to it yeah so this thing this thing will splay quite a bit um, yeah I have to get some I shook out most of the water so we'll see how this goes here just for the hell of it just get a little bit more product you know that's the one thing I'm not used to you know in about the 10 years I've been wet shaving 24 millimeter was kind of a pretty good happy medium for me so that's not a very large brush size for most people um, loading up a 24 millimeter brush doesn't require a ton of product um, but like when you start getting into some of the really dense like 26 millimeter 28, you know, 30 millimeter brushes, those, those do take quite a bit of product. So, for me, a brush this big just takes a little more dialing in as far as knowing how much product to mix in with your, with your knot. So, but yeah, this year, you know, I apologize if, you know, people have been hoping or wanting more content, but um, this year's had its challenges. The main thing is really just scheduling. I think next year is going to be quite a bit different, maybe a little more manageable for me, but just all my jobs have, have been really, um, have been really good during the pandemic. It's just my schedule is kind of spread me thin and so I was hoping to do this video maybe even like three days ago but I've just been so busy that I just don't have the energy to even care to shave off camera so but um yeah just working on pottery I'm kind of in the middle of getting I don't know maybe like 30 more additional pieces, close to 40 glazed. I got quite a good chunk done last week. All right, this is almost there, but also with this amount of beard, it's not gonna get like my normal, like huge Santa Claus type stuff, so. Um, this brush, with uh, how rolled it is, it's it's really good hair. It's. It's really soft. There's obviously enough splay, as you guys can see. This might be a brush that not a lot of people would like because of the lack of backbone. But to me, the handle is so damn ergonomic. I, I really love this. So I like the fact that it's rectangular versus square. I think that that's kind of a neat thing. Okay, we're gonna leave it right there. You guys, this is a really cool brush. Um, like I said, if... Um, if you're looking to 
trying to score a vintage Plasson. Um, I've gotten some off Etsy, if you guys know OSS um, Bronca. Broca. Um, he's a really, really good vendor out of France. Um, years and years ago, he had a lot of old new stock, and I ordered four vintage Plasons from him. Um, all four of them were very good. I would say two of them I was ecstatic with and really enjoyed getting a chance to use them. There was two horns and smaller versions of plexis kind of like this um, that were really, really phenomenal. My first Plasson was bought off of BST years and years ago. The only thing I can really tell or warn people is, you know, it's not the cheapest brush to buy. Um, whether you're buying at new old stock or buying current models, even purchasing used models, I think they offer a little bit, or they go for... a little bit of a higher price than, you know, compared to like other, other brushes. But, um, but yeah, if anything, my recommendation, I like it. This is probably close to 20 or maybe over 20 plus on brushes that I've now tried that are uh, considered vintage. There's only one, two, two vint, uh, I'm sorry, two more so current plus ons that I've ever tried. And, um, I still think that they, they know how to make a really good knot, but the hair is just nowhere near what it used to be, in my opinion. Um, I wasn't trying their highest grade, but just, again, even the stuff that they post, to me, the, the quality just doesn't look quite the same. It's, it's just nothing I would pay the amount of money for. I think it's a better deal to shoot for paying for something vintage so And then this spot, it's been acting up the last three days. So we'll see what this looks like or if it bleeds. This ingrown hair kind of went away for a while and then... All right, let's give this a splash. And um, so real quick, what do we have here? Okay, this is the web um, plus plate, okay? So comparison to this plus plus base plate, this has got a smaller gap, but a little more blade exposure. So I'm taking off the plus plus base plate and we'll do our second pass across the grain um, using this plus webbed base plate. This little splash. Tundra Arctica is a really nice um, formulation. I'm someone that's always enjoyed the. Um, let me rinse off these whiskers real quick. I just don't have a towel. Okay. Yeah, Tundra Arctica for both the soap. And the aftershave, at least for my skin, it's one of the best. So it's hard to say after so many releases that SV has like an obvious standout best. But I just think the ones to mention, 
um, for me personally are the the mana mana is an incredible ingredient that they've added to pretty much every one of the soaps um, this tundra arctica has um, Icelandic lichen and I forget the the berry or whatever. What's the other active ingredient? Icelandic lichen. Anyway, this one's got the most calming face feel as far as the aftershave. So I would say that if I'm not talking about the soaps by themselves, the aftershave and the soap combo tundras really good um, okay because we won't be doing a third pass okay so we'll go across the grain and um, Finish up. So just lighter touch. Find that blade really easily. So because I shave more often, um, it's been a while since I've let my beard grow like this long. But there is a little bit of like a, every once in a while I'll let my beard grow maybe an extra couple of days. And that might be because like I'm itching to use a badger brush. Um, I've just dialed in a lot more this year, the daily shaves and Sometimes I'll shave every day. Sometimes I'll shave every other day. Um, but the main idea is just that if I'm doing more close to daily shaving, the badger brushes don't feel that enjoyable. The reason why I prefer to use the synthetic brushes when I'm shaving more frequently is that the um, the time that I spend face lathering with a badger brush on freshly shaved skin like only a day or two it just doesn't have enough time to kind of heal up or not be quite as sensitive let me just do one last little splash here to see if there's any spots so right in this little pocket seems to be where I always want to get just a little more of a touch up right around that. Okay, and then the last little part is a little against the green. All right, so just do one last little rinse. So, I'm going to just do a little bit of coconut butter. I'll just leave this water on. So, maybe not the most exciting video, but this is kind of an update video. Um, the goal is to do some more regular videos. Um, it might be closer to the end of the year when things start really easing up as far as my schedule. Coconut butter. Uh, not too bad on the um, Nix. I guess there was just kind of like that one. Um, if anything, to give some notes on this scent, 
Um, I do think that there's the rose is present. Um, I do enjoy rose. I think this one has some woodsy scent to it. The uh, there is that sandalwood argar wood. Um, I think when I remember was Tundra Arctica released scent wise because someone had requested that SV do like an argar wood based one. I, I think that was maybe the story. So Tundra Arctica aftershave. Yeah, this one whenever, like if there's any burn, it's so quick. And this one just really, it's like, I call it liquid silk. It calms if there was any razor burn. This is the one that I learned early on when I, when I had like razor burn after the shave and my skin was visibly red. This would usually be the number one choice to help calm the skin. It would bring my skin back to a more normal color, making it look, you know, not so hot and irritated. Um, but yeah, so as far as this scent, it's it's not really strong in the sense of like, it's not super rosy, it's not real dry, it's not real like musky or um, like argar wood. Ood. This one's kind of like if I had to say like scent strength from one to five, maybe like a three, uh, maybe a four. They haven't made this one into um, in a fragrance yet. But I'm really looking forward to when they do that because I really enjoy this scent. Um, some of the SVs, I really enjoy the performance. Secondary to that, I still enjoy the scents. But there's a lot of other companies where the fragrance is a lot more kind of up my alley. But this one I really like. I think um, it's a it's a nice blend. So I um, can't think of any other things but yeah like I said you guys will probably end up seeing um, maybe two new brushes before the end of the year um, I kind of have to hold off on one um, sharing too many details but um, there was one other thing I was gonna mention I don't think I'll end up getting to making any shaving soap before the end of the year I have a feeling that's gonna happen next year um, I've already been kind of taking some notes throughout the year about what I'll probably end up using and so I think what I'm going to do is once I kind of have a little more free time and some um I don't know once I have the time and the energy to to get kind of my soap set up um as far as making I'm going to start with just making a bunch of different body bars um and just kind of get some practice with that and then the shave soap thing like I said it's going to be just kind of like a for shits and giggles um just kind of do it for myself and then to, um, I don't know, just kind of see what it's like making shave soap. Um, it's been a long time since I've made a soap. I think I did two batches. God, what was that? It was about five or six years ago. So, um, it's been a while, but anyway, um, I hope everyone's doing good. I will do a video again sometime soon. I promise it'll be sooner than three or four months, but, um, I'll try to get some, uh, pots in on the next video so you guys can see what I've been up to. If you guys want, hop on Instagram. My Instagram handle, if you guys want to see some of my pottery, is at So all one, Zach's Pottery. Z-A-C-S-P-O-T-T-E-R-Y. If you send me a request, um, I'll end up um, adding you to confirm you can see what I've been up to, um, you know, earlier this year on my ceramics. But, um, like I said, if you guys, uh, want to see more, I'll post some, uh, post some, uh, pots in the next video when I do a shave. So until then, I hope you guys all have a good one and I'll talk to you guys soon.